What is good? We're back. We're getting closer and closer to the NFL season. Me and Big Co are going to hit you with our final rookie rankings today. We're going to talk about some movers, who's going up, who's going down, what to do with this guy, what to do with that guy. We're talking super flex, tight end premium 1.5 rookie rankings. Uh, Before we jump into this season, we figured let's give them one more go around. You know, we've had a little action. We've had some preseason action. We've had some injuries. We've seen some usages. Obviously, it's the preseason. You don't want to overreact too much, but uh, maybe it's, you know, we've got a, we've got a, a disease, a sickness, and the only thing that can cure it is more time. <laughs> so um, let's get into it. Uh, I got tier one, no changes for me. It's Caleb Marv. Where are you at, tier one? Same thing. I just got added. I've added neighbors to that tier. Okay. Fair enough. I, I, originally, I didn't have neighbors in that tier for a pure value situation, but the the training camp hype videos have been astronomical for his value increase. Just the just the public catching on to what you know, just the hype train, outrageous. So his value has climbed up there. It's not the Marv most likely, but some people would take neighbors over Marv, and that and and most people would take Marv over neighbors, which yeah. is fine, and probably should. I just I got neighbors right there in that top tier just because his value is outrageous and I, yeah. he could get 150 targets this year. Yeah, no, I think there's going there's good targets I think to have. I think neighbors is going to be good. I still just think that there's just this really I think it's so much harder to get Harrison than neighbors in in a, in a lot of leagues. I mean there are, I think there are certainly some people who have neighbors over Harrison, but I think a lot of people it's just Harrison's really hard to you know obtain. We just did a home dr- league auction draft and. Marvin went for way more than Malik neighbors. Right. And that's yeah, kind of a good way to ga- gauge the pulse of, yeah. of the, of the, the pweebs or whatever the hell they're called, the, the common man. And it was just, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's a fair point. And I honestly having that split where Rome is in my next tier, it's like, you know, I've, there's no reason that Rome and neighbors and Harrison really shouldn't all be right there together. Uh, you know, the wide receiver depth that the bears have will play into w- year one volume for Rome but I think they're all right there together and just that alone right there is that tier break for me I got neighbors in the top tier and you could easily have him in the second tier with Rome you could have Rome up there I'm not going to argue with you I think most people are probably scoring at home wondering where Jaden Daniels fits into all this yeah so we got a question here with with kind of the fitting of the next two tiers but I'll say my tier first and then we'll have a little combo I got neighbors, Jaden Daniels, Roma Dunze, Drake May in here. And now I'm sure some people had a problem with Drake May being in there. I'm sure some people have a problem with neighbors being in two or Jaden Daniels being in two. But this is kind of how I see it, how I feel. The two guys at the top are are the biggest values and the most unattainable. These other guys are kind of right here, depending on what your flavor is. I think Rome's just as good as the top guys. Like you mentioned, Jaden Daniels, I think, is going to be a good fantasy quarterback and has a really good shot to be a good real life quarterback and if you can meld those two things together then great and in, in in washington they need it they've they've been wanting it for a while they kind of had it with kirk and then they you know he wasn't good enough but but new day new dawn over there for washington Jaden being a little older might help this situation right being a little mature you know not being 21 could could potentially even though he's played more games and he's a little older and some you know you can hold that against him might be a good thing in this situation where he's coming and being the face of the franchise at this point and been a, a few stops. It didn't go quite like he thought it would at, at, at Arizona uh, state there. And they had a lot of talent, but you know, you know, so I, th- I think maybe that, maybe that'll uh, fare well for, for Jaden there. And then Drake may, I thought um, silence, maybe some people uh, and, and, and solidified some value and, and, you know, how he can play in some eyes in these in the, in that preseason showing that he just had it. And other people, if you didn't like him, this is a stupid ranking for you anyway. So, Bico, give me your tier two, and then I got a question here. Well, this is, I mean, that's your, your ranking. So you rank them the way you want to. People can agree or disagree. I think what you started there with, uh, in my, so my tier is Roma Dunze, Jaden Daniels, Brock Bowers, Drake May. And the way you said, you, you, you know, the people at the top of your tier was more unattainable and so unattainable. And that's a really interesting way to talk about it, because if you look at that tier, just my tier, Roma Dunze, Jaden Daniels, Brock Bowers, Drake May, Drake May being on the bottom of that tier. He's way more attainable than Rome than Roma Dunze and yes. Jaden Daniels, in my opinion. Now, some people in the Superflex are still going to take Drake May over Roma Dunze. Most of the time it's probably going to be Rome over Drake, but some people. So it's still pick your poison. 
but uh, Drake May is way more attainable than a Jaden Daniels is. So to have him in the same tier, this is, a, for me, it's the upside of Drake May, the potential future, like absolute franchise quarterback that Drake May could be. You know, Jaden Daniels hasn't done anything to disappoint at all in the, in no. the preseason, but on uh you know Josh is telling me over here and and on underdog podcast which if you look at the the snaps that he's taken and his time to throw has been the hot quickest be quicker than anybody in the league last year and his average depth to target is really low even with that bomb to Dami Brown on his first third down ever in a preseason so that means that Cliff Kings Cliff Kingsbury is getting the ball out yeah. very quickly and very short but what that means is, as you haven't seen, and this is straight out of the underdog podcast, we got my mind thinking today that they're not giving you a chance to see what happens when he's under pressure yet mm -hmm. because they, he's seen no pressure. First of all, it's preseason and everything could be different in first in, in the week one for their offense anyway, but it is preseason from the defensive standpoint. But you got Jaden Daniels who has not had to show us what he does with the rock in his hands as a quarterback with pressure or being standing in the pocket, standing tall in the pocket. You know, mm -hmm. it's been a quick and and you can don't you can spin it as a positive, which you should be still. He hit his he hit his step and he threw that ball to Dayomi Brown. It was a perfect pass. He didn't need to stand there and hesitate. You know, that's just something to think about as far as like the, again, the dynasty value of that pick. When you pick, pick Daniels, Jaden Daniels, you're not taking somebody else in that area. He yeah. could absolutely, he could absolutely explode. There is some, there's some floor that we don't know about yet, you know, whether about how, how low it could be and how high it could be. And I think, I mean, the high it's, it's extremely high, but it could be, which has been your crux of the argument all along, the whole Justin Fields thing. Being not mm -hmm. maybe he's doesn't end up being the NFL quarterback starter quarterback for you know five years. Yeah, no, like you said, I think it was a good you know summation of as he certainly hasn't I, everything we've seen has looked great and the leadership stuff looks awesome. So I you know love it uh, and I and I and I think May's underrated athleticism and you you got to see him use it a little bit. So that's you know that's why I have Drake May up there with those guys. So really the question for me here has been I've had tier three is Brock Bowers and JJ McCarthy pretty much all off season. And I, I think what I'm, what I'm leaning towards here, obviously JJ had the injury Brock Bowers, really not, not a whole lot has changed, but we saw, and it's silly, but like my whole argument with Brock was, are the, are the Vegas is the Raiders going to use him, you know, as the weapon that he is, or just line him up as a boring tight end and just do tight end things with him, which is not what he needs to be doing, you know, consistently all game. And just in the little bit that you saw, you, he was he sat in the last game, uh, yeah. and then you know he, he just in a little bit you saw him. He saw some creative stuff. We talked about it in the preseason and training camp kind of stuff. So I think what I'm doing here is I'm going to move Brock Bowers up into tier two, and I think because of the injury with JJ McCarthy, um, still like him. You can go on your IR spot, so that's fantastic. That's almost a little tick in some value. Obviously, you can't use him, but it, it helps you in some situations. Um, so I'm going to bump J.J. McCarthy down into the tier below him and reset that whole tier into my basically tier three where it was tier four before. So Brock Bowers going up into tier two, McCarthy going down into tier three. How are you handling J.J. McCarthy uh, and the injury? You know, I don't, I don't like to move people a ton unless it was, you know, a Nick Chubb like injury <laughs> where it just decimated, right. uh, you know, so where, where are you at there? Well, I, I did, I did probably, I was very unsure where to have him really in these rankings anyway. And so I just, I dropped him down under the three studs. I call them. Cause I, I, my second tier ends with Drake may, I do have the Brock Bowers in that second tier above Drake may just because of the potential of Drake may. I'm always a little weary about those rookie quarterbacks. You know, me by now, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm always a little weary about the potential fall out of a quarterback that may not, you never know how they're going to work out. That's the hardest position in sports to figure out. And nobody can really actually know how, how they're going to work out until we see how they handle pressure. So I got Brock Bowers right there. I just think he's an absolute monster so, you know, as a freshman with Georgia was crushing, they're handing him the ball. He's taken in the rounds as a tight end, as a freshman at SEC doing work with it. I mean, that's, and he's staying, he do a standing backflip. I mean, that's all you need to know. Right. <laughs> you know, so uh, just absolute monster. Hey guys, we have partnered up with FFPC. We've been playing it for years. Once you run out of friends to play with in Dynasty or you don't feel safe playing with all these randos on the Twitters or whatever, 
and you can't draft a team how you want because you're scared it's going to fold up, FFPC is the spot to go. We've been playing it for years. We love it. It's a slightly different than maybe your big leagues, but you should definitely be checking it out if you are and if you're a dynasty degenerate like us and, and if you, you are, if you're listening to this channel. True. Um, so we've partnered up with them. You can use promo code FFD at checkout and get $25 off. They have redraft, they have best ball, and of course they have dynasty and they have, you know, Triflex Dynasty as well, which is an extra wide receiver and super flex, no quarterback and or no no defense and kicker rather. So we've been loving it. Make sure you go check that out. Use promo code FFD at checkout. Big Co. Yeah, hit us up on the emails, the FF Dynasty at gmail.com, DM on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. We started a hundred dollar league. It takes a hundred dollars to buy in. It takes an extra hundred dollars to pay for for your next year. So everybody's bought in for two years up front, and you can go play a league with us. We mentioned it on our previous video, and we probably have filled up the league already. And we got a couple of extra people, so we'll fill up another one if you want to. We can have a league together, be in a league with us. We'll make a video about the draft. It says it's going to be a sixty second league. 60 second pick of draft which makes it quick uh you don't have to be involved for a week and a half or two weeks in a dynasty slow pick startup where you're having to make all these trades which that is a lot of fun but it is very intense and you got to emotionally and physically be into it your wife or your girlfriend's gonna be upset all that stuff you could just pick a team in 60 seconds we'll make a video about it we'll you know we'll have uh have a lot of fun doing it and then you can you know come over there and make better picks than us and beat us and take our money come on over we're going to do a lot of uh, a lot of that in the off season as well. So looking forward to this partnership with FFPC. Remember promo code FFD at checkout gets you twenty five dollars off. I moved McCarthy down underneath the three studs, which is Brooks, Worthy, and Brian Thomas, and and John the Brooks. You could hear about it on the uh, top twenty five under twenty five podcast we just put out in a video we just put out about the you know just insert Dave Canales running back here. First running back off the board, they prioritized it in the, in the draft this year. Jonathan Brooks is about to be there. They're new and improved, um, you know, running back over there for the Panthers and get a ton of volume. That's what we want at our running backs. Xavier Worthy, Brian Thomas, we see it all of Worthy we can take. All the bombs are Worthy we can handle right now. We're on Worthy bo- overload. Patrick Mahomes, the Worthy connection is going to be nasty. And Brian Thomas is, you know, supposedly unstoppable in camp doesn't have the videos and the hype. And I think you mentioned something about that, about the neighbors versus Marvin Harrison hype neighbors in New York, getting all the love. You got a guy like Brian Thomas in Jacksonville. He's there's hardly any videos of him out there, but that the, the beat writers are like, yeah, there's no cornerbacks that are keeping up with this guy downfield. Mm. Um, and, and, um, you know, when the quarterback, uh, his leads the league and, 20 yard touchdown passes last year, you know, first, first and in, in touchdown passes that were 20 yards or more, that kind of thing plays into Brian Thomas meshing well in this Jags Jaguars offense. Um, yeah. So J, JJ McCarthy falls down past those three guys for me and just clusters up with Bo Nix who comes up into that spot with him. Cause I was very undecided on where I wanted to, to put my, flag it for Bo Nix when you got guys like Lad McConkey and Keon Coleman and Trey Benson and other guys that could potentially be huge for your fantasy team. I got JJ, Bo Nix, and Penix, those three what three quarterbacks together in a super flex. Again, if this is one quarterback, they'd be nowhere near here. But in a in a super flex, those three quarterbacks anchor the next tier for me. Yeah. Oh, I like it. Um, so yeah, moving, like I said, I moved JJ down into tier three, Brock into tier two, and then tier three is, you know, in this iteration of my rankings, I think my tiers have gotten a little bigger. Yeah. Um, and, and I've certainly moved some guys up. Bo Nix, certainly a mover here. So I'll address that in just a second. Um, but JJ in tier three, worthy tier three, lad tier three, Brian Thomas tier three, uh, no particular order there. Um, but that's about where I have them or where, where the order I would go in. Uh, Jonathan Brooks into tier three. I got Penix in tier three. You say what you want to say about Penix and, and having to wait. And that's a stupid pick and yada, yada, yada. This is called dynasty, bub, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I, I think Bo or uh, Michael Penix is in a really good situation in a really good place. And yeah, he might be 26 when he starts. Who cares? He's a quarterback. You know, you get 10 yeah. years out of Penix. He's 36, Bo. Like it ain't, it's not the end of the fucking world here. Like yeah, you get yeah, 10 yeah. years out of any player. It's awesome. If Pitts and, and Drake London and Bijan are going to be part of that core and the O line stays, you know, pretty solid for the next however long, 
you know, I don't know if it's going to, I think I would, if I had to guess, it's going to be sooner rather than later when you'll see Penix. Um, so I'm, I'm keeping them in there and I'm, I'm, I'm betting on the talent and, and a really good situation. And we've seen this play out so many times where you're like, Oh, this guy, AJ Brown to the Titans. We, you know, Nick Chubb to the brand, you know, we've seen it right. all a million. And last year there was probably a few of them that are slipping my mind. Uh, but it happens all the time. And then all of a sudden it's like, bang. Oh, I didn't trust my evaluation. I dropped this guy down because of the situation. You can drop him down a little bit and you should. Because if Michael Penix would have went to the Bears, he'd be fucking in the top of this and was starting somewhere, like like in the situation of the Bears. He'd be right up there with with JJ and or with uh, Jaden Daniels, Daniels and, and Drake yeah. May, right? Yeah. Um, but Bo Nix was in his own tier after these guys. So there wasn't a huge tier change outside of JJ coming down into there. But Bo Nix was in his own tier. And he's at this point earned the right to be up there with all those other guys, right? That we just threw into tier three for me. Uh, so yeah. expanded tier three, but the we and we've talked about it all season shows I've been on throughout the draft process of not loving Bo Nix, but loving the fit. And it has just come into fruition in, in front of your face. And look, it's preseason and we don't need to get too crazy about it. Um, we, we've seen Kenny Pickett be great in the preseason, right? Um, right, but, right. I just it's it's the the way Bo Nix is operating and what he's doing and the fit and the marriage together of him and Sean Payton and getting, you know, I'm not he's obviously not Drew Brees, um, but he's he's he rebuilt himself in a situation in, in Oregon and the system and the scheme and played within it. And now he's going to go there. And that's why oh boy didn't like Russell. He mm -hmm. Russell wasn't doing what. Sean wanted him to do. Bo Nix is going, Bo, I've been here. I was almost out. I was I was the stud at Auburn, and I was almost out because I yeah. tried to Superman this hoe. And yeah. now, hey, let me go to Oregon. Let me play within the system. I got a lot of experience, just like we talked about with Jaden Daniels. And, you know, I know we view that as a bad thing, and I've, I've used it as a detractor here and there. I try not to get too crazy with it. But almost at the quarterback position, like, you know, if you if you come in and struggle for th for two or three years, people are going to then really hammer you with it because you should be better at this. But like, they've played the quarterback position a lot more at this point. They should be able to come in here and, and when the when the 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 glove fits like it does with with Bo Nix and Sean Payton, you know, I gotta I gotta take any preconceived notions I had and throw them out the window and be like, Bo Bo Nix might be a really really solid fantasy quarterback here, and and I gotta give him his due. So he he's. Uh, in there with all those other guys and you could say hey i'm taking xavier worthy over bo nicks 100 times out of 100 me too but yeah i can't rank them uh, you know not in the same tier the the bo the quarter bo nicks could be you know a second round draft pick come next this time next year if, if he's is where we where we think that the that the um possibility ends up with here Right. Right. Uh, yeah. No. No doubt. I mean, the upside, the, the complete upside outcome for him is is that uh, the the athletic ability, the underrated athletic ability that he brings to um, the rushing potential for the fantasy points. I and mean, that's the reason for me. Like Drake May is in that upper tier, We're up there with Jaden Daniels. Like Drake May is not going to turn into Lamar Jackson, but as far as pure speed and agility, but he Drake may has the build in the frame to potentially be the next Josh Allen. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think McCarthy, Bo Nix and Penix could give you that next Josh Allen, next Lamar Jackson type of fantasy football point ceiling. But the fluidity that we've seen out of Bo Nix as this quickly in the preseason it does look really, really good. And it is going to score fantasy points. And what we saw out of JJ McCarthy, although he's very happy to get out and run, I don't think he's quite as, as, as high of an athlete as Bo Nix is as far as running the ball. Um, but both of those looks like they could score some fantasy points in a hurry. Not, not yeah. on the same, not, yeah. not in the same vein as Jaden Mc, Jaden Daniels will. And what the potential for Drake may Drake may running the touchdown in and the goal line is what you're going to see out of him. You know, mm -hmm. Josh Allen and, Jaden Jalen Hurts, 15 rushing touchdowns apiece last year. Like those, that's what Drake May could potentially bring you, which brings you. But also, coaches get fired for potential all the time, right? right? Sure, so, sure. You know, so like the, the, if you're dodging fan, if you're dodging Drake May in your dynasty draft, if it, it based on certain costs, I'm not going to argue there either because I I was dodging a couple of quarterbacks at the top last year, and I made a really good dodge by dodging. The Panthers quarterback, and I missed out on the Texans quarterback, right? As Bryce mm -hmm. Young was a whiff, CJ Stroud was a home run. I just backed out of the batter's box. I didn't even, I didn't even get up to the plate. So yeah. I complete one of them was and, out. And I'm, one I'm, of them a, was in. I'm, I'm, all, I'm in on that 
that uh, game plan for the most part this year too. Like I ended up with some with some Drake May and some JJ and some Knicks and some Penix um, and, and Jaden Daniels in a spot. And I'm not not adverse to drafting any of those guys. It's a lot easier to draft Knicks and Penix and because uh, they're like you know you were getting them in the sec top of the second round. You know two four even sometimes with Knicks or you know two five sometimes with Knicks, but. Um, I'm usually trying to stay, you know, see what I can trade that in for, for a quarterback of known, which is basically essentially what you were saying with, you know, how you are with quarterbacks. So I, I like it. Um, so that's, that's my tier three. Did you go through your tier three? Well, my th- my tier three was the Jonathan Brooks, Xavier Worthy, Brian Thomas. And I had those three guys in front of the the three quarterbacks, McCarthy, Bo Nix and Michael Penix. And in Superflex, that's you, you probably could justify yourself moving Bo Nix ahead of those three guys because he's playing right now. And if JJ McCarthy wasn't hurt, you could justify yourself moving him those moving him ahead of those guys. And if Penix was starting right now, you could move him ahead of those guys. But those three guys, especially Jonathan Brooks, especially from the running back position, when we did our running back rankings, we got down to about six running backs and I ran out of guys I really wanted on my right. dynasty team. As far as a dynasty asset, there's plenty of old running backs that I want on my dynasty team to help me win a championship. But as far as a long-term running back on my dynasty team to hold value, I uh, didn't get very far before I was like, well, okay, that's the problem. Jonathan Brooks is coming in here with Dave Canales. They're coming in here together with Xavier Leggett tied at the hip. The three of them are coming in here to, to rescue this Panthers offense with Deontay. They're bringing in Deontay Johnson, bringing in two new guards and coming in here, hitching their wagon up with Bryce Young and saying, hey, how can we... How can we help? And what and, and what what do we need to do? And so yeah. what they need to do is dig out from the worst offensive performance that you, that you have ever seen. And let me tell. So what that means is, I know you're a 1985, eight, 1986 baby, Seven. right? 1987. Geez, you're so young. The night the Panthers. I got this stat today. The Panthers had a worse yard per play than any team since 1990. Okay, mm. so you weren't even watching NFL football yet since before that somebody was that bad in a yards per play situation, Mm -hmm. they didn't take a snap leading a football game last year in the fourth quarter. I think they won. I think so that type of stat gives you a chance for them to win it on a last second field goal. So they don't have to take a snap. Mm -hmm. You know, I think they, I think they beat a team with the last second field goal, but they didn't take a snap in the fourth quarter with the lead last year. And that's the first time since 1990 and 1990 being like uh, when they chant, when they like the wild car p- postseason era. So it could yeah. have been worse than that. That's as far as the database went back to. So that's what Dave Canales and Jonathan Brooks are coming into. And so there's, you can only go up from here. Right. Yeah. And so I think that, uh, that Jonathan, that's why he's in there for me too. Right. Well, so in the, the, it's just a volume hog. So the Xavier worthy, Brian Thomas, I just think they have the ability to, skyrocket and dynasty value. Obviously those super flex quarterbacks are hard to pass up, but you know, we're talking about the back half of the second of the first round. So very, very valuable picks. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's jump into the next tier here. I've got Benson kind of walking the line here. I've, I've got him. I, I think I want him in three, but right now I have him in four. So he's kind of flip flopping on the daily. I believe in Benson. I think, you know, we, we kind of know that, He's not going to be, you weren't drafting him to have a huge usage this year. We're drafting him to get, you know, steamed up next year, right? To be seeing a little bit of Benson here and there. And by the end of the year, he, he, he didn't do all that much, but the value stayed the same or got greater. And I believe it's going to do that because I think the Cardinals error will be pointing up. I think, you know, the Benson error, there'll be some big explosive plays where people are going to be salivating for Benson. Uh, so I like that. So he's kind of floating right there. And then I got, you know, not a huge change here, but uh, Pearsall, Coleman, Leggett, A.D. Mitchell, Sinnott. We'll talk about Polk at the end of this where he's kind of the, the same thing as Benson. He's t- teetering on this tier or the one lower. But really, you know, before we get any further, I, you know, I, I, we got to talk about where Jalen Wright's kind of ended up here because, again, preseason, right? Uh, but we all like Jalen Wright. Then the draft hit. Capital was okay. The landing spot was pretty good, but you're like, eh, you know, I don't know. But now we've kind of seen it in action. You know, you might have to wait a year for Mostert to be out of there completely. But man, I just feel like using him and Achan at the same time, the the, the scheme couldn't be any better. And I I want to I want to I want a piece of this, right? So, uh, with no pun intended, there, 
I've moved right up out of I had them clustered with Lloyd and Quorum in the tier below, but I've moved right up into this tier with with these guys because I just feel like he's gonna be an asset that as soon as he's doing stuff like A Chan and some people are A Chan, some people will will, will be stubborn with the same, you know, a, a, he's quite a bit bigger than a chan. So I think if he starts hitting his, you know, rise might even be faster and better than a chance. And people are going to be like, Oh, he's going to be the lead dog. A chan's going to still do his thing, but Wright's going to take over this offense because he's five ten, two ten, or whatever he is. Um, mm-hmm. And I did the fit was again, just like we talked about Knicks. I feel like this fit with Wright was perfect. It's speed, 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 but how he operates and what he runs. And now we can put a Chan and him on the field at the same time, throw it to a Chan, throw it to Wright, do different things. I mean, most it's probably still going to be, have good value on this team. And one of my favorite, really probably later round picks at this point, if you know, of course. You, you got a competitor. I just feel like if, if we can put, Ricky Pierce all up here and, and A.D. Mitchell up here and, and you know, the, the hopes of Xavier Leggett and maybe somebody who wouldn't put all those guys up here. But I am because I, I like those guys. But, you know, any of those guys could easily be a year away as well. They're all yeah, buts a little bit, which is why they're down here. And I want right. a yeah, but on right, you know. Oh, for and sure. I, right. So, well, I mean, you got some bigger tiers. So, I, you know, I had a couple of small chunks there with the three studs I talked about and then the three quarterbacks mm-hmm. I talked about. And so I got I went Trey that Vincent. phase already, Big Co. I'm, I'm big. Yeah. I went from little tiers to big tiers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, I, I get it. I, uh, it's a little pockets as you work your way through the rookie draft. Oh, no, no, I feel you. You know, same thing. Yeah, I expect the Cardinals to be go, rising high. We know at some point with the running back attrition, James Conner will miss some games. I hope he doesn't. I hope he actually the crushes. I don't want to see him get hurt, but he's probably going to get hurt because he always has missed a couple games. And then we'll see Trey Benson, and I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic looking with, with, with a real offense out there. Lad McConkie, Keon Coleman, Ricky Pearsall. And Jalen Wright in that in in that one two three four f- fifth tier mind small tiers you got big tiers so obviously this time two weeks ago or, or ten days ago or so the trade rumors were swirling in San Francisco and you know it looked like Ayuk was all but I mean he was basically already packed his bags and gone and Ricky Pierce all value was screaming through the roof he's been hurt he hadn't even been on the field yet but still just as a first round draft pick to the Niners Keon Coleman. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that are still hanging on to him. You know, his lack of separation. I'm, I got a, a telling you, Keon Coleman and Josh Allen are about to make some sweet fantasy football magic. It's going to be amazing. Lad mm. McConkey. We got a little, we got a little deep into Lad McConkey earlier. He got drafted to the perfect situation with mm. no, no, no actual cla- no actual good rat wide receivers other than Palmer. Quarterback is hurt. Liz He's Frank, back, baby. It, you know, is he is he going to be wearing a boot after week one? That's the question, right? Is, is is so if the quarterback is can't get over his list, Frank, the the I think the ceiling of the offense comes crashing down. So the Lad McConkey short term, I think that could be a definitely pitch. Or they need to get the ball out super quick, and Lad McConkey has ten catches week one. But to your point, Jalen Wright up in that tier. I said it, you know, last week on this show after the first uh, first week of the preseason, I got a, a whole handful of Jalen Wrights into my first round, my first wave of rookie drafts. I have a I have a bunch of Jalen Wright, but just like as soon as the Dolphins drafted him, he shot up my board, shot up, but just based on the scheme. And the fact that there's so much stability there in what's going on with Miami and the coach and the way they're, I mean, you could say what you want about them not playing tough and not being good in the cold and all that stuff. But what were the Dolphins before they got that coach, before McDaniel showed up, right? Yeah. So I think he's, I think he's here to stay for a while and that, that Jalen Wright speed is going to be ridiculous. And I have the Leggett Corum Ben Sennett next. So, and you could put Ben Sennett up there in tight end premium. You could put Leggett up there. You could put Corum up there if you have, uh, you know, Kyron on your team. Leggett, I think maybe the uh, ceiling for Leggett could be astronomical, but the floor is a little bit lower. Uh, You know, again, everything's got to go right in the Panthers for everybody to eat, right? Jonathan Brooks is going to be eaten if... Uh, Deontay Johnson is eating. They still got Adam Thielen for now. And I know this is dynasty, but right this second, he's definitely going to be catching some balls. I think they're going to manufacture target. I know they're going to manufacture touches for Leggett and that's fine. That'll be, that'll give him a little bit of a floor, but to get to that ceiling, they're going to have to make him into a real wide receiver. And, and he doesn't, he doesn't have to run all the routes. They, they can just have three or four of those choice rights that those routes that fit in their system. And that's what Dave Canal said. He, they said mm-hmm. he runs the routes that we want him to run to yeah. make our system work. But 
I think I'm tempered by expectations year one in a start in, in like a managed league where you have to put your starting lineup together. If it's best ball, you could bump leg it up a little bit because you can get those big plays. You don't have to worry about when and how you put them in your lineup. Right. Yeah. So Trey Benson, Lad McConkey, Keon Coleman, Ricky Pearsall, Jalen Wright. I just, I think that's a Jalen Wright's too much fun. You don't want to be the guy I was talking to you about this before. You don't want to be the guy that passes on Jalen Wright in the second round. And then all of a sudden there's an injury in Miami in week two or week three. And then he's, you know, startable every week and something crazy happens and there's two injuries and he's not the one that got hurt and he's a league winner, you know, yeah, uh, crazy, yeah. crazier things can happen. You ask him, the Dolphins for years, all their running backs got hurt. The Niners for years, all their running backs got hurt. Same type of system. They're running the, you know, dog shit out of their running backs all the time. Not We know the Dolphins want to run the ball more this year. So says one of their head beat writers. <laughs> so, so I think, uh, I think Jalen Wright is, he's a, he's probably the most fun pick in the second round. Now that didn't take long. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, that's kind of where you're at or where I'm at with this tier is you kind of alluded to it at one point there is, you know, there's a low floor and a really high ceiling with a lot of those guys. And that's why they're there. That's why they're in this spot for me. Um, and that's yeah. And Jalen Wright's Jalen Wright system a ceiling is probably the highest. Mm-hmm. And in a, in a startable, he's got to have, you know, he's just got to have an injury in front of him right now. Like, but, you know, Mostert and a chain were too good. And he's not, I don't think Wright's going to come in there and bully him out of the way up the depth chart in, in year one, maybe in week nine, that's undeniable. And it's a done deal, but Mostert and J- H a H- H- had more, you know, yards per touch and yards per carry than any running back in the history of the game, but in on, on a certain minimal carry level last year, you yeah. know, so no, nobody's been as explosive with their ball in hand, ball in their hands for a season as a chain was last year when he was on the season, when he was on the field. And we obviously know that, you know, most are had ridiculous 20 something touchdowns, which yeah. is absolutely wild. Yeah. You know, so I, yeah. I, you want, you want all the peak, you want all the running backs on Miami that you can get basically. Sure. And, and Jalen Wright is um, at this point in time, much cheaper than a chain and most are 32. So like I, like you said, I'm in a startup, I'm, I'd love to take most in the 14th round of a dynasty startup, you know, and just, get a year out of him and help help yourself win something. Yeah, for sure. This is a low floor, high ceiling kind of kind of tier here. And that's kind of where you're at. Keon being the most kind of Jim Beheim me, like eh, you never had Jim Beheim used to do that before. <laughs> before every you know he, he's kind of my qu- most questionable one in here, but I, I I the ceiling's awesome and the and the the landing spot was good. And then, you know, I've I've seen some people talking about Pearsall being a terrible pick just like you know Penix is a bad pick, but like do you, I, I know, I'm sure none of these people recall where Brandon Ayuk started with this offense, you know? Right. It, it took mm-hmm. two and a half years before Brandon Ayuk was Brandon Ayuk, right? Right. He had some spots here and there, and then he got in the doghouse. I'm not saying Pearsall is going to get in the doghouse. Um, but once again, we don't know where Debo is going to be, and we don't know where Ayuk going to be in a year or even tomorrow, uh, right? Right. With that. And it's just, I'm going to take... Ayuk was in the same position, a first round wide receiver that everybody was eh on for the most part, and you could get good value on him. And now he's like a third round startup pick. Right. So that's just how dynasty is played. And if, you know, if you don't want to play it that way, that's fine, but it's dynasty. That's the whole fun. And that's why I started playing this game because I was playing redraft and I wasn't getting rewarded for having those guys who were good next year. That's right. right. And that's That's what this is about. It's about taking the shot now, being patient, either flipping it for value or uh, in a year or two. And and I, and I like Pierce all a lot. So, and I love the team where he landed in a lot. I mean, obviously I'm a Niners fan, but I think we've got guys in the discord who had no idea that I was a Niners fan because I'm I'm not out here just saying my guys, they're all the best. Right. Anyway. No, that's a good point. I mean, it's a first round pick to the, to, to the 49ers, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and with a young quarterback, who's not going anywhere, who runs the system and makes the throws. I mean, six, 390 pounds. He's not small. He's not huge. He's not, you know, he's not in that. I'm too big to really keep my quickness. You know, he's an exceptional athlete, ridiculous out athlete actually. And, and, you know, this year wasn't as quite as nice, but the year before at Florida with Anthony Richardson, Mm -hmm. His A dot was tremendous. You know, he was getting down the field, making ridiculous plays. So A dot, it was huge, huge. (laughs) You you know, and 
my, I'm a game cock. Debo is my guy, right? When you, Debo's coming out, you're like, what about Debo? I was like, he was the best player on the field every time he was healthy. Mm-hmm. Every time he was healthy, he was the best player on the field. I didn't care who Carolina was playing. Well, Debo's pretty much the best player on the field and when he's healthy for the Niners, too. Mm-hmm. And, and he, he is saddled up with Christian McCaffrey, so that boy's running 1A and 1A over there. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Well, when Debo gets hurt, it's not if, it's when Debo gets hurt. That's my boy. I, yeah, but I can talk to and the him. Niners. Haven't had they haven't had a whole lot of depth at receiver either, and now they got Cowing and Pearsall, and we'll see where Ayuk is. And right, um, I, I don't think I, at this point, you, you know, ten days ago, two weeks ago, it was a lot hotter. I I think we've all settled down. I think we need we see that the Niners played it. You know, the, Ayuk did what he had to do. The Niners did what he had to. They had to do. They let him go out and get contract offers from other teams. To say, okay, look, you know, and it just came out yesterday. Like the Steelers are offering twenty six million dollars. So, like, you've been off, you've been asking us for for thirty. Like we told you, it wasn't going to be thirty, dude. Right. Like right. you know, and did, do you really want to go over there and play with those quarterbacks, or you want to stay yeah. over here and and try to go win a Super Bowl? So, I really think at this point, I would be kind of surprised. Now, two two weeks ago, we'd have been surprised that he didn't get traded. Now, I think I'd be surprised if he did. Yeah. Ayuk's a stud. So, yeah, that I think that still brings down Pitt, Ricky Pierce all a little bit short term. But if Debo goes out. Ricky Pearsall is going to get some run. Mm-hmm. And and so I just, and they put a first round pick into him and that might've been Ayuk insurance and it might've been Dubu insurance and it might've been both of them insurance. Right. So I'm all in on Ricky Pearsall. And what I love about Ricky Pearsall is being able to get him as late as you can get him. Sometimes in the middle of the second round, sometimes in pick two, three, two, four, two, five, get Pearsall there. And then being able to get Jacob Cowing in the fourth round. Sometimes he's made it in two of my rookie leagues. He was undrafted through the four rounds and I, and I gave him and gave him a hard uh, push in, in the first week of waivers and first run of waivers and uh, got him two times on waivers where I couldn't actually trade for a pick in the late fourth round to pick him. And I ended up, you know, just having to get him off waivers. Got got Cowing everywhere. He's too cheap not to. I love the Ricky Pearsall Cowing stack in a rookie draft. For sure. All right. So at the beginning of this conversation, um, I talked about Polk, whether he's kind of floating. He's kind of like Benson. I'm going to put Polk in tier four here with the rest of these guys. And, and why he was kind of teetering a little bit for me is because I think he's the opposite of these guys. Right. A lot of them anyway. I think the floor is really high and maybe the ceiling might be semi limited on Polk. But I think the role is going to be great with him and Drake May kind of moving forward with Baker, maybe being their big play guy. But you know, it's a draft capital is not necessarily as in favor of Baker, but I don't really care about that stuff at quite as much, but um, I'm going to put Polk in this tier. Um, and then we can go to tier five, which will be the last tier for this. So I, in the last tier, I have Marshawn Lloyd, Blake Corum, and then I have Burton Baker and I love Jalen McMillan. So he's in this tier for me. And you know, th- those guys are Baker and, and Burton big ceiling guys. And then the other two running backs are in here because they they obviously have big ceilings too. If if you know the guy in front of them, um, something happens to them. And right now, unfortunately, Lloyd's had something happen to him. So right, um, right, a little hampered. So where are you at here with the last tier? Well, I mentioned mine. I got Leggett, Corum, and Senate. To I got Ad Mitchell, Marshawn Lloyd, Javon Baker, Polk, Jermaine Burton, and McMillan in my next tier. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to I don't know what to do with Jalen Polk. I've never taken him in a second round yet. I've had multiple leagues where I had multiple draft picks and I was taking the Blake Corums. I was taking the Senate. I was taking the Leggett. I was taking Jalen Wright, Ricky Pearsall, all those guys. I stacked all those guys up multiple times. I don't have any Jalen Polk yet. I like Joe. I like Javon Baker better. Um, so I'd rather get Baker in the third round and, and, yeah. you know, let, let somebody else get, get both. Uh, Oh, give me a both too, but I just I haven't been able to pass on Ben Sinnott. I haven't been able to pass on, you know, those types of guys. The Jalen Wrights. I got a ton of Jalen Wrights already. I haven't been able to pass on those guys to take Jalen Polk. I've been watching people take Polk and then let get and Jalen Wright was slide to me kind of thing. And Ben mm-hmm. Sinnott was not slide to me kind of thing. So I don't know what to do with Polk. If I'm I might I might regret that, but that's just how it's been so far for me. And I like the guys you mentioned and I Ben Sinnott, let's go. Yeah, I've been liking I actually been kind of liking getting paid to slide back out of the two four to the back end and getting the polks and the senates and the and the rights. And uh, you know, I like I like those guys and, and maybe reaching on Burton a little or Baker a little. So uh, I like that. All right. Well that's gonna wrap up the top twenty four. We got a couple bonus guys in there. We we have a full I got my full rankings for rookies over at the FFD. Make sure you go check that out on uh, be the $5 holler. We have a free Discord, we got a paid Discord, you get extra episodes over there. We're gonna be doing lots of fun stuff. 
Uh, so make sure you go check out all that stuff over there. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Five-star review if you're listening on the pod. We very much appreciate you, and we'll catch you next time. Peace.